So what the heck is ejection fraction? It's basically a measure of how much blood your heart's main pumping chamber, the left ventricle, squeezes out with each beat. And a healthy heart should actually pump out between 50 to 70% of the blood in the left ventricle. And if it's pumping out less than 40%, that's when we start to worry because it means your heart isn't pumping as well as it should be. So if you are audience A who would like the supplement stack, skip down through the video and you will actually find out the exact milligrams and dose is required. And or if you are audience B and would like to listen to the full information and why EF happens, then continue watching but as always guys please give me a like watch an ad and subscribe and that's the only way you can actually support my channel and I will continue supporting you in return for better optimized strong heart now there are a bunch of things that can actually cause your EF to drop heart attacks coronary artery disease Cardiomyopathy is actually a fancy word for heart muscle disease. Valvular heart disease, that's when your heart valves don't actually work correct or right. And high blood pressure can all lead to EF over time. So now if you've got a low ejection fraction, your doctor might put you on medications like ACE inhibitors, beta blockers, or even diuretics which are water pills to actually help your heart pump better and reduce the strain on it. They'll also probably tell you to make some lifestyle changes like exercising regularly, eating a plant diet, and finding ways to reduce stress. And that's their most common approach, which 90% of the time it fails. Now in some cases, you might need surgery to fix a problem like coronary artery bypass, grafting to improve blood flow to your heart muscle or valve repair, uh, replacement surgery to fix faulty heart valves. But the question is, can a low ejection fraction be reversed? Well, it depends on what's causing it, how severe it is, and how well you respond to treatment. And of course, the earlier you catch and treat the problem, the better your chances of actually improving your EF? So my answer is 100% yes. So now let's take a step back for a couple of minutes. When I mentioned what causes EF to drop, most common issue is high blood pressure. And we know for a fact it's 100% fixable. Now next on the list was cardiomyopathy and this affects the heart muscle, causing it to become enlarged, thick, and rigid and for that issue we do have a specific supplementation to actually enhance and re-strengthen the heart muscle as well you can stop the progression and it is 100% fixable now when it comes to valvular heart disease usually it controls the flow of blood through the heart and when valves are damaged or diseased they may not open or close properly which think of it as you know calcium contracts and magnesium relaxes so in other words magnesium plays a massive role in this factor and once you saturate your cells correctly this issue could be fixed and when discussing conventional treatments recommended by a cardiologist, keep in mind that your heart is not deficient in ACE inhibitors, beta blockers, or diuretics. These medications merely mask the symptoms, allowing the root cause to actually continue progressing. Me personally, I would advise against any surgical intervention, but that's my perspective. Now, let's talk about some natural ways to give your ejection fraction a boost. Supplements like 
coenzyme Q10, L-carnitin, omega-3 fatty acids, creatine, D-ribose, nitric oxide, and magnesium have all been shown to improve heart function and EF in multiple studies. In addition, there are some herbal remedies as well like hawthorn extract and arjuna bark may also play some benefits as well. But continue watching as I will provide you with the proper milligram usage and what best supplement stack works. Keep in mind also high intensity interval training would be highly recommended at least two to three times a week within the average of 25 minutes per session. So let's discuss the first stack, alcarnitin 3000 milligrams, ubiquinol coenzyme Q10 300 milligrams, creatine 3 grams and D-ribose 5 grams. All these supplements have been shown a massive improvement in ejection fraction and all been heavily studied to support your heart. So number one, alcarnitin is an amino acid derivative that helps transport fatty acids into the mitochondria for energy production. And studies have shown that alcarnitin supplementation can actually improve heart function, increase EF, and reduce symptoms in patients with heart failure. Recommended dose is 3000 milligrams per day divided into one or two doses. Number two, ubiquinol coenzyme Q10 is a potent antioxidant that plays a crucial role in energy production within heart cells. And research suggests that coenzyme Q10 supplementation can actually improve heart function, increase EF, and reduce the risk of heart-related complications. Recommended dose is actually 300 milligrams per day divided into one or two doses with food. Number three, creatine is an amino acid that helps supply energy to muscle cells, including heart muscle cells. And many studies have suggested that creatine supplementation will actually improve heart function and exercise capacity in patients with heart failure. Recommended dose is three grams added with the stack. And number four, D-ribose is a simple sugar that helps your body produce ATP, the primary energy currency in cells. And some research indicates that D-ribose supplementation may improve heart function, reduce symptoms, and increase exercise tolerance in patients with heart failure. Now, a recommended dose is five grams per day with the stack. Now, for certain stent users, could utilize up to 10 grams daily in two to three separate doses. Now, in addition to the four supplementation stack, would also highly advise everyone to add magnesium ionic chloride at a saturation levels of 200 milligrams per dose every four hours. Now, do keep in mind, the only reason most cardiologists will give you beta blockers is to actually block calcium channel in order for magnesium to help relax the arteries. But this is an incorrect advice. If you intake proper magnesium as it's heavily, heavily been used by the body, you will actually balance your systolic and diastolic and reverse up to 90% of any heart damage with a combination of nitrate supplement. And what I mean by nitrate supplement is actually the precursor to convert to nitric oxide. So it vasodilates the arteries and of course it allows more magnesium to saturate and for the stack, actually, that I mentioned earlier, to work at its optimal levels. So there you have it, audience A and audience B. A powerful supplement stack and additional tips to support your heart and improve ejection fraction. Now, if you find this information helpful, and if it has positively impacted your life, even in a small way, please consider sharing it with a friend or a family member, 
you might save a life. Also, if you could watch an ad or two, your support would be greatly appreciated. So until next time, this is Maurice signing off and reminding you to take care of your heart because it's the only one you've got.